This video was sponsored by Babbel. Are you thinking about buying a kiln? In this video, I'm going to share with you six things that you need to consider before you make the purchase. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you three alternatives to buying a kiln, all of which I've done myself when I was first starting out on my pottery journey before I could afford the massive investment of a kiln. But I'm gonna to go to the other room because this room is not very cozy. That's better. So first up, six things that you definitely need to consider before purchasing a kiln. Number one, kilns are expensive. This is not just the kiln that you need to buy. Now I'm going to be talking about electrical installation and ventilation in a moment, but you also have to consider the kiln furniture and maintenance. Each one of these bad boys cost me 30 euros. And these things, the kiln posts, they're between five and seven euros. And you'll be needing a whole selection to stack your kiln efficiently. Now, these should last you a long time, as long as you don't have any like disasters. But you know what doesn't last a long time is your kiln's elements. Now, these need to be replaced every one to three years, depending on how often you fire your kiln. Each time I replace mine, it costs me 150 euros. And I replace them myself. I'm talking about the actual raw materials of the elements. Then there is the electricity. Now, if you're a business, this is tax deductible, but it is still an expense you have to factor in. For everyone, I would recommend one of these electricity meters to keep an eye on your costs, but especially you need one if you're a business. At one time I did the calculations and I figured out it cost on average about five euros per firing in just electricity. Now that's not a ton, but it does add up. The second reason that you might not actually want to buy a kiln is above a certain kiln size, you might need to install a high voltage electrical current to just support your kiln. Now you can get around this by finding a kiln that works in a standard socket like I did, but keep in mind, these will be less efficient and you are also going to be severely limited by size. This kiln that I have is pretty much the biggest kiln that you can get with this standard 220 voltage. Another option is using an existing high voltage line in your house that you might have, such as for an oven or a clothes dryer. But of course, then you're sacrificing those things. So it's up to you. One of the reasons that I personally don't want to bear the costs of installing a high voltage line is because I rent. And in addition to all these costs, like is your landlord cool with you having a kiln? <laughs> Now, I think a lot of the safety concerns for electrical kilns are actually overblown. So side note, if you're trying to convince your landlord, here's what I would do. Most people, like landlords included, have no idea how a kiln works. So they will just flat out say no because it's like this big, scary, hot thing, right? <laughs> I don't blame them. But if you help them to understand how it works and assuming they want happy tenants, just explain to them that it's just like an industrial sized toaster. That is basically all an electrical kiln is. It has these little coils that heat up. Yes, you can set fire to your house with a kiln and that's why we're going to talk about insurance next, but you can also set fire to your house with a toaster if you don't follow like the most basic of safety protocols. Speaking of safety, I do have a whole video on studio safety. I'm just gonna tag right up here. Okay, but before we get to the insurances that I recommend, let's take a little break for our lovely sponsor that is Babbel. So, don't let my American accent fool you. Although I am from the US originally, I have been actually living the last 10 years in Germany. And learning German has been such a struggle for me. It is a really hard language <laughs> with epic grammar rules. And on top of all of that, I'm super busy. So it's hard for me to fit improving my language into my day to day. But that's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. In as little as 15 minutes a day, you can start learning a new language in just three weeks. And Babbel teaches real world conversations. So when I speak to my neighbors, I can feel confident finding the right words. It is really easy for me to get lazy with my German, but it's summer now and I'm going out on more holidays and day trips around the area. So I'm really getting inspired again to keep pushing myself forward to keep learning. So whether you're an immigrant like me or you are just got some travel plans coming up, Babbel will help you speak like a local with your very own language school in your pocket. If you wanna try it for yourself, I've got a special limited time deal just for you to get started right now. That is 60% off your Babbel subscription using my link down below in the description. Now let's get back to our chat about kilns. 
Okay, now that I've just downplayed the whole idea of safety concerns about a studio, why do I still recommend getting insurance? If you have renters or homeowners insurance, it might cover a kiln. You should ask them yourselves, but renters or homeowners insurance definitely won't cover any kiln disasters if you do anything commercial with your kiln, AKA selling your pots. So since I use a kiln for my business, I have some standard business insurance that insures the house that I rent in case I do any damage due to my work. This is including a fire from my kiln, but also like water damage or anything else that uh, I damage the house with my work, right? If you live in Germany, I have the Gewerbehaftpflichtversicherung <laughs> and I have that and also another Gewerbe bundled Versicherung. Basically, I have one that covers if my business does damage to my landlord's property, like if I set a fire to the house. And the other one also covers if my landlord's property does any damage to my business. So like if a pipe breaks in the house and it damages my kiln. So for me, both of these costs together costs about 260 euros a year. I think it's pretty well worth it. Okay, moving on, we're gonna talk about ventilation. Now, ventilation can be complicated or it can really be as simple as opening a window. An open window works if your kiln is out in a shed or something like completely detached from wherever you will be where the kiln is firing. Now, my kiln is in a basement, so here's my setup. Down here, I have a little inlet. This guy, oh God, controls whether or not air can go in or not. There's like a little hole down here. So this is how air comes in through here. And then the exhaust comes out through here. So there's a hole on the side and because hot air rises, it goes pretty much straight up. So this is where a little bit of the exhaust gets out, but pretty much this is wide enough to capture all of it. So all the hot air goes up, 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 up. What I do when I'm firing is I got a little hook up here, a little hook here. Just open it. Hooks out there, just like that. Now I could have this more hard installed into the space, but like I said, I'm renting. So someday, maybe. <laughs> this setup gets the vast majority of off gassing out, but there is still a little bit left over. So for me, that is fine because no one is ever in this room when the kiln is firing and our living space is through a door, down a hall, through another door, up some stairs, and finally through our front door. So I'm pretty okay with this system. By the way, the tubes that you saw, uh, you can buy from your pottery supplier or you know from wherever you bought your kiln. Now, if you live in an apartment building or your kiln is like in the next room from where you sleep, or if you plan on like being in the room, like working on your pottery while the kiln is firing, I do recommend a proper ventilation system, which of course is going to cost you time and money. But just like the high voltage line, it's definitely doable. Just get an expert involved. Personally, I plan to, when we get to our final home, that's when I'm going to set up the electrical and ventilation system. Okay. so. I ran a poll on my community page and 53% of you identify as beginners. And that is awesome. And I'm so glad that you found your way to ceramics, but in your case, you might not be ready to commit to a kiln. Story time. So a girl I knew once took a pottery class and she got really excited. This was a slip casting class and she had a blast. Like she learned how to make molds. And once that class was over, she was just like hooked. She decided she had enough money together, so she bought her own little kiln. She created a little pottery space in her garage and she was just having a blast. Then six months go by like this and her life gets kind of busy. Her pots weren't turning out as great as they were in the class and she starts to lose momentum. And then eventually she lost interest. And one year later, the kiln was still sitting in her garage, only having been fired three times. Now, eventually she sold this kiln to me, which for me was awesome. I got basically a brand new kiln at half price. That's the kiln that's still sitting in that room. But of course for her, that's a bit of a disappointment. Now, <laughs> unless you're like Scrooge McDuck and you have money to burn, you might wanna take a beat before jumping right in and buying a kiln if you are just starting out, especially because there are some really great alternatives out there, which I'm going to get to in a moment, <laughs> but you want to make sure that you are committing to your craft before you make this leap. 
And hey, there is no shame in getting really excited and diving deep into a craft for a short period of time. For me, like every five years, I become obsessed with quilting and I get really into it. I make a bunch of stuff and that's cool. Our hobbies are hobbies. They can change, they can be picked up, set down. There's no pressure. There should not be any pressure with your hobbies. But my advice is be realistic to yourself. Really consider, am I in this for the long haul? Okay, now despite the title of this video and all of the reasons that I was just listing about why buying a kiln sucks, I don't actually want to discourage you from buying a kiln. I just don't want you to underestimate that this is a big commitment. If you are ready to go for it, that is honestly one of the most exciting things I can think of as a potter. I'm gonna try and put up a photo here of the first time that I got my very first 40 year old kiln. It wasn't a new kiln, it was a 40 year old kiln, but this was such an awesome day for me. So before you go, I want to give you a few solutions. So you have realized that you're actually not ready to buy a kiln, cool. Doing ceramics without a kiln is actually a lot more doable than you might think. Alternative number one, you know, <laughs> what I'm going to say first, right? Rent a kiln. Unless you live in an extremely remote location, your area probably has a kiln somewhere. So here's where to look. Try Community Pottery Studios first. So just Google Community Pottery Studio plus your town. You can also try with local potters. Again, just use Google. This is what I did when I first moved to Berlin and I had no money to buy a kiln and certainly no space to fire it. That's another factor, right? <laughs> Community centers, retirement centers, et cetera, things that people come together, places that people come together and do crafts. Kilnshare.com, okay? There is literally a website for this purpose. Kilnshare is run by this really friendly guy named Mike and the whole thing is totally free to use. Potters list their kilns to hire, so it's a great way for them to get a little extra cash and it's a great way for you to get access to a kiln. Also bonus for Berliners, if you happen to live in Berlin, I actually have a list on my website with a bunch of pottery studios. There's like memberships and classes and stuff on there, but it also lists studios that hire out your kiln. So I'll link that down below in the description. Number two, join a community studio. Now, I'm not just saying this because I used to run a community studio and I think that they are some of the coolest places ever, but they really are great. <laughs> yes, it's going to cost you a monthly fee, but considering what you get out of it, it can really, really, really be worth it. Not only are you getting access to a kiln, but you're getting access to experts who know how to run the kilns. They are probably also providing all of the materials and glazes, so you don't need to sort any of that out for yourself. They have all the tools, the gadgets, the space, which will in the end save you a lot of money. But that is actually nothing at all compared to the most game-changing benefit to working in a community studio, and that is the community itself the network of potters and ceramic artists who can help you, inspire you, elevate your skill and creativity beyond anywhere you can get to from working alone. Honestly, like it's impossible to undervalue this. Everyone gets inspired in these places, even the people who run them. And community creation alone, like even just beyond pottery is such a life-changing life hack. <laughs> Feel connected, be less depressed. Now, I know not everyone has access to a community studio, like it's mostly in major cities, some smaller towns, but if you can do this, it is my number one recommendation for beginner potters. Okay, now my last suggestion for you to live your life and be a potter without having a kiln is probably going to get me kicked out of the pottery club. But if you're a sculptor or if you're using clay for non-functional work, in my mind, there is no reason that you need to be working with real ceramic clay. So alternatives include air dry clay, polymer clay, which both of those are available at pretty much any craft store. You can work with cement or plaster. You can dig up mud from your garden, mix it with some straw and make cob and build some sort of sculpture with that. There are all sorts of plastic materials out there that go way beyond ceramic clay. Now, if the reason that you are not ready to buy a kiln is not actually any of the problems above, but you're really just too intimidated to buy this massive tool, you have no idea how to operate it or like what you should focus on, I'm going to link my kiln guide playlist right here. That is just three videos that will help you to correctly install your kiln, how to do a bisque fire, how to do a glaze fire in your brand spanking new kiln. So I hope that helps and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.